Hi, everybody. Welcome to The Coco Show. I'm John. I'm Aaron. And today, we're going to be talking about two awesome games, Aaron. Tell oh, us what we're going to do. We're going to do Canyon Climber yeah. and... Poo Yan. Poo Yan. Poo Yan. All right. Just like saying that. It's a, it's a, it sounds dirty. I don't know why. Poo Yan. Yeah. Well, what do you think is the... What's the best game title you've ever heard in your life? Oh, gosh. Don't put me on the spot. The best game title I've ever heard in my whole life. Oh, jeez. But what are you, what's your favorite? I'll oh, it's simple. It. No one can stop Mr. Domino. No. <laughs> That's all you need to know. Your Everything you need to know about that game is found in the title. Your, your obsession with that, with that title and that game. What, what is it about that game that you find so alluring? You're, you're a domino. People are trying to stop you. They can't. No one can stop Mr. Domino. I would say my favorite, I will say Poo Yan's up there just because it's so ludicrous. It does, it does. Sounds um, pretty blue. I also like uh, the 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 uh, worm, what are the things still, still, uh, still a sparky, the spectrum. Oh, yeah. Uh, the fat worm blows fat a worm sparky. Blows a sparky. That one's. That is gotta, a good one. It's got to be up there, too. So I'm going to go with those two. I'm going to okay. have two. I think that those are those are two quality titles. Why didn't that get poured all over? Oh. It's actually a decent game, too, as I recall. It's one of the great losses of the Cocoa <laughs> Library that Fat Worm Blows a Sparky was not ported. Where's the Xbox One version of that? <laughs> it's coming soon. It's an XBLA Gold title. <laughs> oh, man. All right, Aaron. Let's talk a little bit about... Oh, shoot. I didn't switch the scene. Hold on a second. We'll just switch that right over. Aaron, let's talk about the first game for this week, Canyon Climber. You know, this is a, a, a sort of a perennial Coco title. I, this is another one I would see quite often at the Radio Shack, and I would marvel at the uh, pictures of this in, in, in the catalog stuff just because the uh, opening scene looks so incredibly graphically. I look back on it now, and I, it's funny now, but I remember thinking, my God, that looks just like a canyon. Mm -hmm. Amazing, amazing graphics. So, uh, Canyon Climber, uh, released in 1982 and published by the people over at Tandy, uh, was authored by a guy named James uh, Garron. For, he's from Datasoft. Now, listen, he's got quite a lineup here, Boatster. Uh, he was responsible for it, my brother's favorite Coco game, Dallas Quest. Oh, yes. Can't wait a, to cover that he one. He did show. a lot of big titles on the Coco. He did Zorro, uh, Sands of Egypt, another very popular. Is that Zorro uh, like Zorro? Yeah. Oh. Moon Shuttle, which was good. And he also did Puyan, basically, so, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, he did Shooting Arcade and Five Speed Racer. He did a lot of games. Um, this game, though, uh, this might be his most famous of the bunch. It's got to be right up there. Uh, this uh, was uh, out for the, this will work on the 1, 2, or 3, 16K RAM, and this was, came on cartridge. Uh, so, this has a design credit for, for Steve Bjork. So, these guys worked on this together. It's funny, I, I had trouble differentiating who did what on here, to be honest with you, because I read some articles where both these guys were mentioned. I was going to say, maybe they all did a little bit of everything. And we, we if you recall in our last show where we covered uh, Downland, they changed the name that because it was going to be originally called uh, Cavern Climber, mm -hmm. but it was because of this game's name. And, it, and he mentioned that Bjork had been working on it. So, I'm not sure how much of who did what on I'm this. I'm sure the you know the Coco uh, development uh, teams were all in touch with each other. It sounds like. Yeah. Now here's something I didn't know, but this kind of blew my mind. This game got ported. Did you know that? No. There's an a, there's an Atari 8-bit version. Oh my gosh! Of this. I'm I know. Have to check this out. And an Apple II version. It also got ported to something called the PC 6001. Oh. Yeah. So that so there you go. I thought that, so that was interesting. Uh, the uh, uh, so what is this game? Uh, the game is a three-level platform. Let's go with platform. That's sort of what it is. Uh, and you are uh, a fellow that is climbing to the top of a canyon. Now, the first screen takes place uh, on a series of bridges mm -hmm. that are, are connected uh, vertically with ladders. Right. And your goal at this level is to plant explosives. You're blowing all these bridges. Mm-hmm. Uh, interesting, weird. Now you're, you're not you're never given any backstory as to why you need to do this, correct? I'm not I'm not familiar with the backstory. Okay. Uh, the uh, there's uh, just a job, and you, somebody's got to do the job, and that person. is That's you. right. So as you come up these ladders and go across these bridges, when you you automatically plant the explosive, provided you're not jumping over the point where you're supposed to plant. That's a key. Yeah. 
along the way there are mountain goats that are running along the the, the platforms that mm -hmm. try to knock you off yeah these goats are crafty too first of all they move at a speed much faster than any mountain goat i've ever come across they're much faster than your guy too. yeah yeah and they can switch direction without warning and, and i hate that mm -hmm. and so that was kind of a bummer because you could be jumping over one and they could just change direction and you're and you're boned uh, but this level i found um not super difficult, but it's not. It's probably the, I'd say this is the second most difficult of the three levels. Uh, so once you plant all the explosives, you go up and hit the plunger that's located on the upper left hand side of the screen. There's a really neat effect yeah. on the screen. And I will say I looked at the Atari 8 bit, and the, uh, it, it doesn't get this effect on there. Mm. Uh, it, but the screen shakes and sort of compresses in a really neat way. Yeah, it was a real cool effect. It really I, makes you think that you've blown up the canyon. Yeah, and cool, sure. cool sound effect too. Mm -hmm. Uh, then you are uh, on to the second level. Now the second level is a, m a lot more straightforward, I guess. You you're going up almost like the girder level in Donkey Kong. Mm -hmm. You'll run all Except the way up. Except there's no gaps in it. Yeah, you run all the way up to the end of it. It's sort of uh, diagonal up. Then mm -hmm. you go up the ladder. You go up the next one. At the end of these levels, at the end of each of the girders, if you will, is a is an is an Indian classic cowboys and Indian style mm -hmm. engine. And he is shooting arrows at you. And right. So what you have to do to get to the end of that section is to jump over the arrows. There's sort of a cadence to the arrows. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't find this level too difficult. No. In fact, this level is the letdown of the of the game for me because uh, there's, there's absolutely no challenge to it. Uh, whenever I would play this, either on the first go-through or the second go-through when I would loop it, uh, I would have trouble, you know, the mountain goats would get me. Every single time on the on the uh, on the Indian level, I I was able to jump the arrows because they 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 come out at the same rate of speed every time. Yeah, it's the same number of arrows, and you can easily pass through it. It's it's almost like a waste of a. Yeah, well, when you get to one up the chain, this level gets harder. That's, mm -hmm. Well, they all do, but this one gets a little bit harder. But yeah, I didn't find this one too difficult, and it's not really that inventive. I, I do think it's interesting that at the end of the second level, you sort of descend or you ascend into the sky. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you're just floating you away. You literally <laughs> float up into the air, which yeah. is. It is an odd, odd choice. <laughs> so then you're off to the third level. Now this is uh, the hardest level Absolutely. by a long stretch. This is the level where you're, I guess you're mesa hopping mm -hmm. effectively. Uh, once again, you're going up sort of at a diagonal angle. At this time, you're having to jump from uh, mesa to mesa uh, to uh, keep your ascension going. Now. It wouldn't be a, a game without a, a lot of pain. And so at the top of the screen, over top, floating over top of the uh, mountain in the sky are birds. And according to the docs that I, I read, the birds are dropping bricks. They're dropping bricks on you. That, or it could be, if you were a less... Uh, if you were so inclined, you could say look, that looks like the birds are pooping on you, right. basically. Right. Uh, and as they and so as the, whatever it is, bricks drop out of them. If they hit you, you're dead, and your guy falls off the mountain. Anytime mm -hmm. you get killed in this game, your guy falls off the mountain in a very painful looking <laughs> now, way. Even more so than the <coughs> excuse me, mountain goat level. Uh, the 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 way that the birds fly across the screen and the way that their droppings are dropped on you. Uh, are is totally random. Yeah, you cannot predict what's going to happen, and that's what makes that level the combination of the platforming and the randomness of dodging the droppings is 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 a real challenge. Yeah, I I found that it, I had trouble at first, and I found that if I concentrate on each jump, uh, and ignored everything else, and just you would be okay because. You can get to points in this where you actually have completed a jump, but you're sort of not really standing on the maze, and the second you move or do anything, you fall off. Mm -hmm. And the birds are a challenge. This is a challenging level, and the way the uh, the jumps are structured is a lot of them, and some are small. It's actually pretty. Cl I kind of like that level. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of it's a lot of fun. And if you manage to get to the top, the very top, and I told Bo when we, before we before he'd gotten to play, I said, listen, if you get to the top. And you get knocked off. Don't feel bad. That's part of it, and that's exactly what happens at the very. T you get to the very top of this game, and a one lone ram rumbles <laughs> through the level and b nails you and knocks you all the way down to the bottom of the hill. You've got to start again. Yeah, and in Superman the movie style, time is rewound to where you <laughs> you have not blown up the dam yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, then you just repeat, and the levels get harder, and it, and they do get harder, including adding extra goats they're faster mm -hmm. they're more arrows from the indians it's uh there it's a it's a it's a difficult upswing I, I only i managed to beat this two times in a row i can never do it three times yeah. in a row so but it's still it's a challenge but it's not 
this is sort of like baby's first Donkey Kong, basically. It's like it's not that complicated. It's not that tough. It's not complicated at all, really. I mean, it's pretty uh, easy to understand what your goal is. Mm -hmm. And so that makes it approachable. And I will say that uh, in this game's uh, checkbox, the, uh, the the environments are varied, which is more than you can say for Donkey Kong. You know, you're not in, you're not in in various uh, in various settings. You don't have the canyon. You don't have the blue alleyway. I'm not really sure what the second stage is supposed to represent. And then the the the, the windy the windswept mesa peaks that you leap from from from. Yeah. So uh, you know, this game obviously this is this is no Donkey Kong. It's not nearly as great. The level design isn't nearly as great, but it is. I had fun with it. I thought it. I thought it was a fun game. I kept going back to it, trying to see if I could if I could progress further into the second loop. I could never beat it when it looped twice. Uh, I would have liked to have seen uh, some offensive capability from your player in some aspect. Uh, you know, there's no spinach. There's no hammer. It would have been cool just to mix things up a little bit to give the game a little bit more variety. However, that would have introduced a whole other set of things that the, the programmer would have had to have done. Because aside from the mountain goats, there's really nothing that you can destroy. Uh, the Indians could have as well been, um, you know, sort of like um, Mayan temple booby trap arrow fly, arrow, you know, statues. Yeah. Uh, they don't move around a whole lot. So. Or at all. Yeah. It, this game has a special place in my heart. because and It's funny. I can ro almost put myself in a role playing for a moment and think of it. Here's a guy up in these canyons, a lonely canyon mm -hmm. by himself, climbing ever higher. Right. As dopey as that sounds, this is the way I looked at this as a kid, so it's kind of uh, still with me, mm -hmm. uh, the way I felt. It's it's a games that were multi, it's a lot like Poltergeist in a way. These multi-tiered games were not a widely spread around concept back in the day. So when you had effectively, you feel like you're getting three games in one, it was pretty cool. Yeah. And when the games don't suck, it's double trouble. And this one doesn't suck, it's good. Like I said, I distinctly remember thinking how incredible the graphics are. The graphics are pretty good. Mm -hmm. They're colorful. This is the, uh, of the of the ones I looked at. I looked at the app on the Atari and this. This is the standout, I think, graphically uh, by a long stretch. In fact, this, I think the other games are not as good as this. I think this is the best of this type of game. Uh, you've got a little tune that starts off the game. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> According to what I've got written down here, uh, this was a musical adaptation of the prelude section from the prelude and fugue in C minor, Boat. You're a, you're a master musician. Does that mean anything to you? Uh, the prelude, I know the prelude and fugue in D minor, oddly enough, in G minor, but not the one well, in C minor. there you go. So you can add this. But one. I'll tell you, see what that BW uh, thing stands right there? Yeah. BWV? Yeah, what's that? And so when you're a really famous composer in classical music, yeah. you get a catalog number where they line up all your works in, in a chronological order, yeah. and that's the one for Bach. Well, there you go. So look at that. Your musical prowess comes it's in handy. It's finally come in handy for the first time in my life. <clears throat> I, uh, I had a look uh, for reviews, and I've actually, like I said, I found a couple of review sites that actually do some reviews. The uh, computer, the car computer review page gave this a C minus. He was not impressed with this game, mm. and the GameSpot folk gave this a three and a half out of five. I, uh, I like this game actually, yeah. and, and again, this is a game that I did play back today, but not a ton. I remember never being able to get the first level at the time, so I'm doing better now. Uh, but I, I enjoyed it. Like I said, it's not something I'd want to play every day, but this is one you can go back to, you know, every month or so and give it a whirl and, mm -hmm. and work on your high score. Uh, I looked this up on eBay, and of course, this falls into the same realm as the other Coca Games in the box. Although this does have uh, some versions had nice box art, uh, th but you can get this with the instructions and the cart. 12 bucks all day long. Nice. So it's an easy pickup. And this is not one that you want to be without. I would add this to your collection if that's something that you uh, get, get into. Cool, cool. Well, Aaron, let's move on to the next game, Puyan. Now, you know, Puyan. Uh, I love this in the arcade. Did you ever get to play this in the arcade? No. This I one, mean, I've played it on main, but I've never played it in a real arcade. This is a game I played a lot in the arcade. Mm. All right, I thought it was a lot of fun, and it's super original. There's never been a game made for like it before or since. True. I mean, you name any game, you name any game, this slightly resembles in any way. You can't. True. There isn't one. So when this came out for the Coke, I was like, "Holy smokes! What a deal!" Uh, this came out in 83. Now, this was released by Datasoft uh, and developed originally by Konami in the arcade, which I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, this was available... Now, listen to this. This is a, 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 a throwdown. This came out on everything. You got your Apple II, the Atari 2600. That port's 
eh, it's okay. The Atari 8 bits, which I believe you looked mm -hmm. at. This came out on the Casio PV1000. Never heard of that. No. Uh, the C64 MSX, the Nintendo. There's a version out on the Switch, the P the PS4, the S the Sword M5. <laughs> That's one for the wheel. Yeah. on ARG presents the the Tommy Tutor. Wii and Wii U, Windows, Xbox 360, all had versions of this, and probably many more that yeah. we're not covering. Uh, again, this was authored by Jerry Humphrey and James Garan, the same fellow that did the, the game we just covered. Mm -hmm. And again, it came out in, 90, in 83. This was available, if you had 32K of RAM, you were in. Uh, this was a tape, and you could use joysticks or keyboard. So, I mentioned this came out uh, in the arcade originally, and this was done by Konami, another great Konami game. These guys were all up in it back in the day. Uh, and uh, in the game, you control Mama Pig. So you're Mama Pig. Hey, a, a great arcade game where you play a lady. Mm -hmm. And your goal in this game is to keep these horrible, uh, no-good uh, wolves away from your babies. Because at the, at the bottom of the first screen, there are your babies. So how does Mama Pig do this? Well, she's got a one of her babies controlling an elevator that she rides in, and he controls whether it goes up or down. And the wolves are coming off of a neighboring tree to descend into Pig Valley, and they're holding balloons in the cartoon style to lower themselves safely to the ground. Mama Pig is a master archer, so what she does on the first level is shoot the balloons that the pig, that the wolves are. Holding and eventually the balloons burst and the wolves plummet to their death. Yeah. Now, this game has three basic uh, screens. The first screen, the wolves are uh, coming down from the top of the trees down to the ground mm -hmm. and, to, and to try to get your babies. Uh, your job, like I said, is to move up and down and shoot them with your bow and arrow. Now, these guys have balloons, so you can shoot the balloons pretty easily, but sometimes they'll hold up a little stick in front of them that'll make it hard to hit. And some of the balloons take multiple hits. Mm -hmm. Super balloons, right. boat, if you will. They get they go from larger to small. And occasionally at the top of the screen, you'll see a little flashing thing. That's a piece of meat. Mm -hmm. The wolves are so meat hungry that they can't help but go grab for the meat. And when they do, they effectively kill themselves. Yeah, and, the, and the meat is is thrown in an arc. It's different. That's right. It's different than the, your arrow, which flies straight out. So if you have an arc of a descending wolves coming down, you can knock them all out at once with the meat. I like to call it ham. Yeah, it could be any whatever meat, the meat of your choice. So that's your first level. Now, when the wolves get to the bottom, mm -hmm. they don't just get down there and start chowing down. What these guys are jerks. Behind Mama. Is a series of ladders, four levels of ladders. It's almost like a stairwell in a. In That's a right, garage. and the wolves will go and uh, get in one of the little platforms behind Mama, and occasionally they'll take a swipe at her and try to bite her. And if mm. Mama's where the bite is, it bites her and kills her. So that's your first level. The second level takes and twists this completely around. The wolves, instead of coming from the top of the stream, are starting at the bottom of the screen. They've, they've at this point they've captured your pigs. And, and they are coming from the bottom of the screen to come up and try to push a boulder over on Mama's little gondola there and kill her. Mm -hmm. And so you've got to shoot them on their way up instead of on their way down. Uh, they are There's a balloon generator at the bottom of the screen. These wolves will grab a balloon and, and go up. I should mention that the whole time these wolves are near, they're throwing rocks at Mama. If a rock hits her, she's dead. Luckily, the roof of the, the, of the little elevator she's in, can and the bottom of it, the, if the rocks hit those, they just bounce off. Yeah. So they sort of, if you maneuver right... It's like a sort of, shield. That's kinda, exactly yeah. right. Occasionally, a balloon will just pop up that you can just shoot for points, too. So once you run through all these walls, if you allow too many walls to get to the top of the screen, they're sort of like a conga line behind a boulder. And mm -hmm. when they get, I think it's six walls get up there, they shove the boulder onto Mama at seven, and she's dead. Yeah. And that so you lose a life. So I think I always thought that was super clever, mm -hmm. uh, Boaster. Uh, and... Uh, then there's a bonus stage. Something that I should mention that the last wolf has a super balloon. That's like it takes like what six, seven hits a ton to blow of it hits, up. Yeah, uh, it's very cool. Uh, the the third level is sort of like a bonus level, and then you st and then basically the game repeats. Uh, it's a, a a classic game in the arcade. So how did the Coco version do? Well, I would have been trepidatious back in the day. I remember when I first played this, and it really blew me away. Uh, it plays great. It plays just like the arcade. 
I don't think it lost anything in the translation aside from the color palette, you know, the overall resolution, the graphics. Uh, they did a good job uh, capturing the arcade feel of this game and with the limited palette that was available to it. The controls are, are solid. Every aspect of the game is here, including the little tune that starts off the, at the beginning of the game. The only aspect that's missing is the end game song, which is a shame because the, the music in this game in the arcade is, is outstanding in the boat. Uh, and, but it plays great. Uh, it's not cheap. The controls are good. Uh, one thing about this game, you only need the joystick and one button, so that worked out well. Uh, the meat is fine, and uh, it all it all uh, was a rock solid ver home version of the arcade. What, what did you think? I want to disagree with you. Okay. Um, this game is uh, it, it it definitely resembles Puyan. It definitely looks like the game. Uh, this game suffers because of the aspect ratio of the action. Um, this game takes what's uh, normally a vertically oriented game and squishes everything down to fit in a 4x3 window, which means that the enemies are closer to Mama Pig and they don't fall as far to get to the ground. This makes the game much more difficult, not only because you have less time to pop the balloons of the wolves before they reach the ground, but you're also much closer to their rocks as you throw the, as, as they throw the rocks at you. In this game, in the arcade version, I can easily get to all three stages, no problem, first life. This game, I never saw the third stage. I never saw it, it was too hard. And there's no excuse for a home version of an arcade game to be harder than the arcade version, because the arcade version is designed to suck money out of your pocket. So they, what they should have done in this game is artificially created a wide or a, a, a vertically oriented screen by giving you more bezel on the sides and redrawing the graphics to suit. Um, the, there is no reason in the world why the sky in this game is pink. The Coco can do blue, it can do blue well. The sky should have been blue, not pink. That's no good. Um, the, uh, and finally, the, uh, while the pigs are multicolored sprites, I know there's no hardware sprites in, in the Coco, whatever you want to call it, the, the wolves are one color. That's also no good. They should have figured out a way to make the wolves at least two colors. Uh, Playability wise, it's okay, but this game doesn't do a whole lot. You should be able to design a game that fires arrows and lets things fall to the ground. Um, I was not impressed with this, and finally, I know it's probably beyond the Coco's capabilities, but not having that in-game tune, I didn't realize how much of my enjoyment of this game came from listening to that background song. It's not present. It is here. great. It yeah. is great. It does have the opening. You know, it does da -da 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 have the opening. Yeah. Da -da -da -da. yeah. And it's got a closing thing. You're not wrong. I will give you some of what you said. The aspect, of course, this is the same aspect ratio that most of the home versions had. All the home versions. I uh, know the Atari is not like this at all. Well, I mean, it's still a four. It's a four by three it's screen a four with by a vert th game. Is my point right? But they redraw it so it's at the proper height. I, and I will say, I will agree with you. And I, of course, I, having played this in arcade many times, the the Coco version is a difficult version. But you can get good at it, and it's, it's and it's the same principles uh, as the arcade. So the gameplay from the arcade is still there. It's a di it is more difficult. And there's no doubt about that. It's a more difficult game, and you have to be uh, very precise. And you also got to be prepared to just buy it occasionally. Because, for example, I, in the arcade, I can routinely get all the wolves to eat the meat. Mm -hmm. And if you throw it right, it's very very difficult to do that here. And uh, what they kept the patterns from the arcade. Too. Right, they kept the patterns, but when they redrew the the scenes, the patterns no longer work well, because the aspect ratio is. That's. Not right. I mean, it does. It is. It's more challenging. They. It's. 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 It's laziness. I don't what they should have done is gone the extra mile. They went ninety percent of the way. They should have redrawn it so it made sense. So you could still use the same tricks that you used in the arcade because it's not taking any more computing power to do that. Well, I think you've got to understand the amount of uh, of moving there are a lot of movement going on there's a lot going on here I have a feeling that this you're pushing the limits of what the Coco can do with the amount of things going on on the screen uh, in terms of the palette the palette is what it is no it's not the the Coco can do blue there's no reason there, why they couldn't well, make the they, sky blue there's probably some reason that we don't know is what I'm saying okay I, well I would like to know that reason. you know Curtis the, uh, right in please the uh, the uh, the fact of the matter is 
that it, to me the graphics are okay. I don't have a problem with that. They're, like that doesn't bother me because I think okay, it's it, this could be uh, late evening and early morning sky. It's not a big deal. I mean the, the trees are green. You don't have a problem with the way the white. wolves look. The, I think the wolves are pretty good. They're emotive. You can see the little looks on their faces when they're looking at you. Uh, I don't that doesn't bother me a bit. And the, I will say the lack of the in game music that is something that you do miss because that's such a great tune. But if anything, that's the thing the Coco can be forgiven for. Yeah, because I, I, it's just. It, Although it could have pulled off the song, there's no doubt about that. It just but pulled not, off during well, the yeah, game. Yeah, right. yeah, I, I agree with you on that. But I mean, I think you've got to. I mean, listen, uh, Coco officially licensed arcade ports. There weren't a ton of them, and uh, I think this is a noble effort. Uh, you get the you get uh, most of the fun of the game, admittedly, at a, 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 a steeper learning curve, but it's mostly there. And it's fun, and I and so I personally this is this was actually one of my favorite arcade ports in the Coco. Uh, I enjoyed it, and I went when I going back to play it this week. I still enjoyed it, but yes, everything you said about the aspect ratio, we've you know this happens on other systems mm -hmm. too. Sure, uh, it's this game. You really do need the extra height that that vertical display gives you to accommodate for you having to shoot those wolves because you need the uh, space to work with. Mm -hmm. Something else having it smushed down is that you. It makes the wolves much deadlier when they get behind you, and you have to be very careful of where your positioning is because there's not a lot of empty space between the right. wolves. If you get four or three back there, it's, it could be a real hassle. But I mean, all that aside, uh, I think it's a fun port, a playable port. Is it the best port of this game? Probably not, but it's something that if you want some Pugan, you can buy this and you're getting some Pugan. I think that you should spend your Coco time playing something else, and if you want to play Pugan, there's tons of other ports that are better. So you're saying you think this is so bad it's just not even worth playing? Yeah. Oh, man, I don't agree with you at all. Yeah, I think that there's there's so many great gaming experiences to be had on the Coco. If you want Pugan, you can find your some Pugan somewhere else. Well, if you've got a Coco like I did and there were no choices, and this was what you had, you were happy with it because it was, uh, it was fun. I, I, I like it. Um... I uh, looked this up. I didn't see any reviews on this particular game, so I don't know what that means. Sometimes you don't find it. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's hard to find yeah. them on here. Yeah. I did look. I found uh, uh, this was a tape uh, Coco game that I don't think it ever got a release on cart. Hmm. Uh, I found it loose. The tape six, uh, thirteen bucks, and I found a sealed tape. You can still get this sealed, boats. Sixty bucks your best offer. So mm. not too bad there, but. Overall, yeah, I can, I can listen. I can understand your 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 points. I'm not saying they're not viable. I'm just saying I thought there was enough game there to make it fun. Okay. Although one thing I definitely agree with you on having the tune missing is a real bummer. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, we do want to thank uh, all the fine folks that support the Coco Show. Uh, if you enjoy the show, you can uh, go over to Patreon.com/slash The Coco Show and uh, throw us a few bucks. There are some perks. You can get some magnets. Yeah, you get the ability to choose uh, the games that we play each week. Uh, we want to thank uh, Jeff Landreth, Graham W. Vebke, and Wing Chun Wolf uh, for supporting the show. We do appreciate it. And uh, be sure to, if you're watching this on uh, YouTube or Twitch, uh, and you want to listen to the audio version, uh, you can find us on every podcatcher or just go over to anchor.fm slash the Coco Show to get links to all of your favorite, uh, the version of the show on all the podcatchers. Um, and if you're listening through audio, of course, you can watch the video show on the Amigos Retro Gaming YouTube or Twitch channel. Mm. Uh, Aaron, it's been fun. We will see you guys next week. Keep on playing the Coco. See you later. Bye-bye.